Hey guys, welcome back to Bombi TV. So today we're going to be reacting to why don't the Trinity Doctrine make logical sense? Guys, this is going to be by Doctor Shabi Ali. Guys, I've already checked this out before, but I made some research about it, and the research was shocking. Like the research was shocking. So I'm going to be reacting to this again. Listen to this again, and telling you since I have actually heard about this, I'm actually Christian and. You 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 will be blown out for the answer I'm gonna give you to this. So stay with me throughout the video, but I need to say this: this video is actually sponsored by one week, guys. You can see the way I'm looking. Like I think this, I don't look like this in my channel, guys. Like you even knew me, guys. Guys, this video is sponsored by one week, guys. I'm having a Black Friday on Friday and a Cyber Monday on Mondays, guys. It's gonna be amazing. This month of November is gonna be lit. Like, Mommy have given me this opportunity to let you guys know about their offers. Like, the offers is crazy. You know, when you are wearing something of high quality, and you know you wearing something of high quality, it actually boosts your self-confidence, guys. I think you should check out the store. There are many and many ways, and it's going to be amazing. I'm going to get 80% off. 80% off and 15% for my promo code Bambi TV, guys. It's, it's amazing. Like, I don't think there's anyone giving you that kind of offer. Guys, I went out to find this for us. So, guys, make sure you check them out. Link in the description below. Guys, let's get straight into this. As for the third question, this is where I'd like to uh, devote the bulk of my time, uh, because here is where Muslims and Christians are divided. Uh, our Christian friends say that Jesus was fully God, and uh, Muslims uh, would insist that uh, there is only one God, uh, the one whom Jesus actually worshipped. So I would appeal to our Christian friends tonight to look carefully at the Bible and to realize that the Bible does not actually justify the claim that Jesus is God in the sense of the Almighty God. God. Let me differentiate between a few positions uh, so that we can get more into the uh, heat of this discussion. Um, think about our Jehovah's Witnesses friends. They believe that Jesus was a sort of God, a God, but not the Almighty God. So they would look at John chapter 1 verse number 1 where it says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. And they would translate it and the Word was a God. And they have uh, a sort of grammatical justification for that uh, translation. Whether that is justified or not, uh, it's not my, uh, my, my stopping point at the moment. My point is simply that here is a Christian belief that Jesus is a sort of God, but not the Almighty God. We need to recognize that when we speak about the Almighty God, we are speaking about that incomparable being. He beyond, with nothing, beyond which nothing greater can be conceived. Now, if, if there is someone who is lesser uh, than him, or if he is greater than someone else, then that someone else obviously is not God. And we have in John chapter 14, verse number 28, that Jesus himself says, my father is greater than I. So when he is referring to God as someone greater than himself, he being the lesser, obviously is not that beyond which nothing greater can be conceived. And Guys, this is where I actually have to come in. Like, this is where I have to come in. Based on my research, like, you guys are like, do research, do research. Guys, I left my studies, I need to do research. And this is, I don't know if you're going to affect, say, the future, but I'm doing this for you. But based on my research, guys, I kind of found out that the Trinity isn't really written in the Bible. It was not. It was never written in the Bible. And it was actually a man who brought out the concept of Trinity. And... I would say the man isn't among his disciples or nothing. He thought of it and he said, mm. he like, I feel he, he didn't mean, do you know when someone says the king, the son, and his wife, like, he's trying to say they are one family, but the king is greater the son is actually going to be the next king and the wife is like you understand the wife when you marry someone you are the person to one and we have a wife like you guys are connected so you understand he's trying to use this kind of 
blood link like they are linked together in a pattern because we can actually believe god is the father jesus is the son of god and the holy spirit is the comforter in the sense that god is superior than jesus than the holy spirit if you ask any christian that's any honest christian that will answer you correctly that won't want to hide under his or free that is open-minded he will tell you this we believe that deep down we believe that god is greater than jesus but jesus is the son of god so it's like he's saying his father his son you know the, he's also great but his father is greater than him you know we, we can't actually use I think we are not supposed to use our logical mind to compare Jesus and God. He said that we don't know how they view up there. Like we don't know how it is. That's where the thing comes in. Like we are not supposed to just think for God or for Jesus. We are not supposed to. We are not supposed to put things into the mouth. Or oh, Jesus once said, I am my father or one. But I feel how I will translate that is meaning he's the son of his father so they are one a lot of people say i'm wrong but you guys don't believe he's the son but i believe he's the son of god because based on the baptism jesus uh, god as i said he's my beloved son him and one please i actually accept what he is saying because i actually had this conversation with my brother and he was like we know god is greater than jesus right like the way he said it out like yeah, like that has been my mind too. But like, I feel we could say would want to open up to it because we kind of believe in the Trinity based on what we have been taught. But I feel based on what we have been taught, everyone in this life learns what they know. So you actually believing what someone is telling you is actually making you limited to their own knowledge. So this is something that I feel everyone should do on your own like someone might have told you something and it might be a rumor you don't know you just believe it since the starting of my channel i feel the only thing i've complained about is trinity like i've said a lot countless times that oh, i'm having issues understanding the trinity i'm still i haven't gotten the right answer yet till now i'm being honest i haven't gotten the right answer yet i need clarification but i think i'm gonna get it by next week i'm gonna see someone and i'm gonna come back to you guys guys but like you ask any christian about trinity i feel you're gonna mess the person's mind up like the way it messed my mind when i found out creative wasn't written in the bible like i was like then who brought it out like Guys, I want to say a big thank you to for you out there that are actually patient with me, that actually enjoy and love my content. Like, I want to say a big thank you to you. Guys, let's get back into this. Therefore, he is not the Almighty God, regardless of whatever else we might say about him. Now, uh, the, the Arian controversy in the 4th uh, century was precisely about this point. Is Jesus uh, a sort of God, a sort of divine being, but not the Almighty God, or is he, as he would be declared in the Council of Nicaea, uh, very God of very God? So we have two sides of this, and Jehovah's Witnesses have picked up again on that uh, Arian uh, formula of saying that Jesus was a sort of divine being, but not the Almighty God. Now, if we say that Jesus was uh, the Almighty God, we, we run into some difficulties of uh, trying to reconcile that uh, with the, the obvious declaration throughout the Bible that there is only one God. Now, we have to find a way to conceive of Jesus and the Father as being together as only one God, while Jesus is God and the Father is God at the same time. Now, the oneness Pentecostalists uh, have their own way of working this out. To them, uh, the Father came down here on the earth, so it, it is the same one 
person, that one individual who, who you might refer to as Father and as Son, and, and also as Holy Spirit in various modes of his uh, existence or appearance. Now this goes back to a very ancient uh, creed as well, uh, that uh, was uh, known to be that of a person named Sabellius, and so the creed is called Sabellianism, uh, the belief uh, that God goes through different modes of existence, and it is also called modalism for the very same uh, reason. Trinitarian Christians reject that. Tr the Trinity holds that there are three uh, eternal persons in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the three are one. So there is one God substance, uh, Christian theologians have decided to say, uh, but there are three persons that share that one God substance. So there are not three gods, there are three persons. The Father is a person, the Holy Spirit is a person, the Son is a person. Uh, each is a person, and each one of these persons is God, and yet there is only one God, because the Christian theologians assure us there is only one God substance. But now, to maintain uh, the, the belief that there is on, this only one God substance and the three persons who each is to be called God, uh, this is very difficult in, in practice. And one tends to fall uh, into heresy uh, in, in one way or another in trying to maintain this uh, uh, belief. Uh, and so, let me show you a couple of books. We have a book entitled uh, The Trinity and subtitled How Not to Be a Heretic by Stephen uh, Bullivant. Uh, what, <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, the, the, the title is very telling, it's a subtitle in fact. Uh, Stephen Bullivant wrote this book to, to help Christians to speak of the Trinity in the right way. Uh, because if you don't speak about it precisely in the right way, you fall, it's like walking a tightrope. You either fall into heresy on this side or on the other side. What happens is that if if you emphasize uh, the distinctiveness of the three persons too much, then you make them into three gods. You fall into the heresy of tritheism. And if you de-emphasize the distinctiveness of the three persons, then in the end it seems like you only have one person and you have fallen back into Sabellianism or modalism and, uh, as, as is now represented in the Oneness Pentecostalist uh, uh, Church. Another book uh, along the same lines is uh, The Forgotten Trinity by my good friend uh, James R. White. Now James uh, White speaks about uh, the, the heresy that uh, the, the average well-meaning Christian may fall into. Like for example, when, when somebody speaks as though uh, God goes through uh, three different appearances as someone might do in a play, putting on one mask to represent one role as they did in ancient times, and then putting on another mask to represent a different role, uh, the same actor but three different uh, appearances. Uh, now uh, obviously what uh, James wants to, to assure us about is that in the Trinity there are actually three actors, but of course there are three actors who share the one God substance. There are three uh, persons. And to emphasize it further, uh, James is uh, telling us that the Father is not the Son and the Son is not the Father. Neither are any of these the Holy Spirit. Each one is distinct by him himself. Uh, often, in a gathering like this, uh, I have found that a Christian would stand up to ask a question and uh, if they actually want to convince me that uh, the, the, there is a logic behind the Trinity. And they would say, well, you know, it's like me. I am a, I am a father. I'm also a son. I'm also a husband. So here I have three different roles. Well, putting it that way is falling back into Sabellianism and to modalism because that's the one person in three different social social roles. That's like Jesus himself having different social roles. He is a friend, he's a brother, he's the son of his mother. So he has different social roles, but he's one person. Uh, but that's not the Trinity. Uh, the classical definition of the Trinity says uh, not that there are three social roles, but that there are three persons, each of whom might have uh, different social and, uh, and economic functions. 
So one falls into these heresies one uh, way or, or, or another. Uh, another problem was pointed out by Peter of uh, Callinicum uh, in, in, in the fifth century, who wrote a book about this, and the book has recently been uh, republished uh, for our education. Uh, he charged that uh, Christians are falling into um, another sort of heresy, which uh, involves a fourth God. Now, if you think about it, you have the Father, you have the Son, you have the Holy Spirit, and each one by themselves is God. What about the combination, the three of them together? Now, uh, if we think of Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, each is powerful by himself or herself, but when they work together as a team, the team is obviously more powerful uh, than, than the individuals uh, by themselves. So uh, Peter of Kalinicum is asking, when Christians think about the, the Godhead and then the three persons that share the Godhead, isn't the Godhead greater than, than any one of the persons by themselves? And do you not, in fact, end up thinking of really four entities, the three persons? Persons plus the Godhead. Uh, so it, 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 this is a difficult concept, the Trinity. But uh, I, I want to appeal to our Christian friends and say that if you, if you go back to the Bible itself, you will realize that the Bible does not actually support the belief in the Trinity. Uh, the Bible actually supports more Arianism as it is, as the Bible is now. In that you will find passages which depict Jesus as Son of God, uh, as the Word of God, uh, as a being between God and man, uh, through whom God created created the universe, uh, but not as the Almighty God himself. It, it, in the very statement, uh, the, the, the intermediary being through whom God created the universe, we're talking about God as being someone else other than Jesus, who is shown to be this intermediary being. Now, not all of the documents of the New Testament present Jesus in the same way. Uh, the earliest of the Gospels, the Gospel according to Mark, shows Jesus to have many uh, important limitations. Limitations in his knowledge, limitations in his power. And uh, when people responded to him, they obviously did not take him to, to be the Almighty God. But we will see in, in later documents, later Gospels, uh, Matthew and Luke, for example, and especially the Gospel according to John, uh, we see a much more developed theology in which Jesus is represented as that intermediary being. So we have, for example, in John's Gospel, for the first time among the Gospels, uh, the mention of Jesus as the Word of God, through whom God made everything else. Uh, this concept was not there in the previous Gospels. The title, the Word Word of God is only in the gospel according to John. So how did that happen? Imagine Jesus on the scene and Jesus was uh, teaching people uh, about himself. Well, naturally he would tell them, I am the word of God, if he was the word of God. And, and that would be one of the most important statements Jesus would have, been, would have made ever. And all of the writers would want to write the same thing. But that is not what uh, the, the other three gospel writers wrote. It is only John who picked this up. And John is said to be written late in the first uh, century. Century. And uh, as Dr. James White uh, points out, well, John would have had a long time to reflect not only on what Jesus said, but on what he meant. And many uh, writers uh, excuse the gospel according to John uh, on this basis, that because it was written late, it came after a long period of reflection. But I would say a long period of development um, in the f centuries after Jesus uh, had been taken away from the scene. Uh, Christians continued to think about Jesus, preach about him, and uh, to develop develop a theology about him away from what Jesus actually taught. But that is not so much my point. My point is still that even if you take the, the documents as they are, even John with his full development as it is, John does not present Jesus as being the Almighty God. Uh, John for, uh, chapter 17 verse number 3 has Jesus looking up into heaven and praying and saying this is eternal life that they may know you as the only true God and Jesus your messenger as Christ. Uh, in fact, apart from uh, referring to Jesus as Father, this is a, a very um, a Muslim thing to say. Uh, the one Jesus was speaking to is the only true God, and Jesus is to be recognized as God's Christ, or Messiah, or in the Arabic, Al-Masih, as is mentioned in the Quran in chapter 3, verse number 42, and in many other passages uh, of, of the Quran. Uh, we go to Paul's writings, and people refer to the Carmen Christi in, in Philippians chapter 2 to say that Paul uh, took Jesus to be God. But what Paul is saying there has to be bracketed within the 
rest of the Pauline writings, uh, and even in Philippians itself. Now, normally, Paul uh, begins his letters with doxologies in which he is praising God, who he says is the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there is a God who is the father, and yes, there is our Lord Jesus Christ, but he is not the one who Paul is calling God. Even in Philippians, if we're looking at chapter 2 and you want to interpret it uh, in that way, look at the problems we encounter. Philippians uh, chapter 1 starts with the same doxology, giving glory to God the Father and distinguishing God the Father from Jesus Christ, who is not called God. And uh, in, in uh, the, the same book of Philippians ends in the same way, with, uh, with Paul distinguishing between God the Father and Jesus Christ. What is more important is that uh, in, if that was Philippians chapter 2, in which we have the Carmen Christi, in chapter 3, uh, Paul declares that we worship God the Father. So it's clear whom he worships. So Philippians chapter 2 cannot be understood to mean that Paul is calling on Christians to worship. Now I need to comment again. Like when he says we worship God the Father, like I'm Christian, I feel I need to give my opinion. But he's a Muslim. And I feel from the starting to this point, he's right. Like, I won't say he's right because I know it all, but based on the knowledge I have, I feel he's saying the truth. And he's just trying to, because the Trinity is in the Bible, and this actually messes with my brain, like, based on what we have been taught as Christians. For him saying this, Paul was, we actually believe that there is one true God. Like when I say this, I say this every time, but the Trinity kind of messes everything up, but we Christians actually believe there is one true God, and believe that Jesus is actually the Messiah. When he came to die for us, sin, he came to be, he's the mediator. Because if, listen, if, I don't know if you have heard, read history, but there was this thing that happened. We can't actually, we, we can't actually get to God. We need the help of a prophet or something for us to be able to communicate with God. Well, of divine favored men. But God actually broke that. I don't know if I would say it's a curse or, the bondage holding on because of sin, because we need to be cleansed for us to get to God. That's why Jesus actually died for us. He that's why we believe Jesus is the mediator. Because he died, his blood was shed in our behalf, so we can be able to reach out to God directly. So that is what we think about Jesus guy. But I don't know what to think about it. But if you read the coming of Jesus, they were like, he's going to be the savior of the world. You get me? So I don't really know why you guys don't believe he died though, but let's get back into this. But I'm going to be, I'm going to make, I'm going to search for a video for you guys and make sure I try proving the fact that Jesus died. Let's get back to this. Jesus. No. In fact, what he's saying basically is that Jesus was in the form of God, and what that means needs to be unpacked, because God, in fact, does not have any form. He's not saying that Jesus was God, but he was uh, something maybe of a, in, in some kind of a divine form. That's the best way of explaining what Paul was saying. Jesus then, instead of trying to go higher than he already was, he chose to come lower as a man, and then lower still by, by allowing himself to be crucified, and then as a result of him coming lower, God lifted him up higher and granted him a name that, that is greater than he had before. It's a lesson in humility. If you come down from the position that you already have, God will lift you up to a higher position than you already have. So for him to be lifted up to a higher position than he already had, that means that he was not God to begin with. And then, of course, he does not ever become God because Paul begins and ends the same letter uh, with the same doxology. And he confesses in the next chapter that he only worships God. And, and God the Father is what he is referring to there. So what does it mean that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow? Well, let me uh, add a, a point here from Muslim uh, practice. There are verses of the Quran which, when we recite them or hear them, uh, we fall on our knees, we, we fall prostrate, but we are praising God. So we fall prostrate to the glory of God. We don't worship the verses, but the verses remind us of God, and we prostrate. So Paul seems to be saying something similar. At the mention of Jesus' name, uh, 
uh, Christians will fall on their knees, they will, uh, to the glory of God. But that does not mean that Jesus is being regarded as God. A similar expression is... Guys, I think I need to explain this to you. When they say in the mention of Jesus' name, every knee must bow, it's in the sense that the name is powerful. Jesus being the savior of the world, he has been given that, that authority. So in his name, mountain, in his name, all nails shall bow. So it's not mean when we call Jesus, we actually bow down to pray or something. We respect the name, we give the name that honor it deserves. But we use the name when we are in trouble or yeah, we use the name when we are in trouble or want a favor or want to reach God. Yes, his name is as as something we present hold jelly Jesus. Like the name is beautiful, is powerful and is magnificent. Guys, let's get back into this found in Philippians chapter 1, where the glory of God is to be given by Christians through Christ. It's not that Christ himself is the end point and, and that Christ himself is the God. I believe I'm getting close to, to my time here. How much time do I have? <laughs> One minute. I, I'm almost sorry that I asked. You know, she might have fallen asleep. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. But uh, to be fair, let me wrap it up then and say uh, that in short, there has been a development where Jesus has, through the centuries, even through the Gospels we can see, has been made uh, from a man into a divine being, a, 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 an intermediary between man and God through whom God created the entire universe. But still, uh, he has not been made into God in the Gospels or in the Pauline writings or anywhere in the New Testament. The New Testament continues to affirm that there is only one God and he's not Jesus. Now, if our Christian friends can come to this belief that there is only one God who is not Jesus, but the one who you refer to as the father of your Lord Jesus Christ, that will bring Christians and Muslims close together in harmony and we can work better together uh, to achieve greater things uh, for the world. If one refuses to come to that position, one walks on the tightrope of the Trinity with the possibility of always falling into heresy on this side of the rope or on the other side. Thank you very much. Guys, I think I'll end it because I'll try to to this before together. And it's very fun to check out on the video, guys. But I think I've explained what I think I have to. Look at the end of this video, guys. Make sure you check out Romy that made this video possible. But I need to also see this, like, the Trinity, I, I, I told you, I'm not quite sure of my research. But based on my research, I found that it was a man of God who actually brought out the concept of Trinity and people accepted it because it kind of made sense. In the sense that if you had to use the king and queen kind of role, like he's a king, his son is going to be the next king and his wife is one like that in one family and you can call all of them one like that the rulers like that kind of stuff and they coexist together so i think maybe that's the logic he was trying to use but i don't think it's right for you to actually bring out a logic that isn't in the bible like it's not and i think i'm gonna have this debate with a lot of people who actually believe in the trinity like i mean i feel me actually discussing things like this with people is because i want to see your opinion i want to see what you think about it not because i think i'm right or i think i know it all like i want to learn that is the reason why i read the comment section like don't get me wrong guys i'm not perfect i don't know it all i want to learn more from people people who think Oh, they, they have gotten the knowledge. And I don't, I feel we are humans, no one is perfect. So I don't think anyone is perfect and anyone knows it also. Like collection of knowledge or co collection of your comments that actually are like, and we come up to a conclusion of what it is. Guys, special to like, share to my channel. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye.